Welcome back to the Myth series in depth. In this mission, we will face Moagim. You might be a little disappointed after we face him though, just to give you fair warning, because I don't think that Momo Jumbo finished scripting his AI. This mission occurs within the Norn Pass one day after the fall of the crown. As the rain fell on the quieted battlefield, a great sorrow befell the ranks. The Emperor of the Cath Bruig, their beloved Emperor Leotrim, lay dead, struck down by Moegan's blade. A mournful gathering formed around the Emperor's body. Damas and Connacht knelt at his side, saying soft prayers in his honor. In a nearby grove of trees, Connacht and Damas laid the Emperor to rest. Damas, holding the Emperor's royal sword, set it gently upon his chest. A line of Herengard made their way to the fallen emperor. Each in turn snatched off their crane and blazoned pendants and laid them upon the sword. Their lives now became devoted to one thing, the death of he who murdered their lord. Through all their confrontations and arguments, Connacht had learned great respect for the emperor. Even with all the knowledge he had gained from Mazarin's codex, he muttered to himself, this was not written of. They returned to the ruined encampment in the light of the spreading dawn. Connacht assembled the remains of the army and bid them to avenge the death of their emperor. To the man, each offered his sword to the task. Even the wounded and incapacitated volunteered, but Connacht chose only a few battle-hardened survivors to accompany him. Before the sun cleared the eastern ground, they were underway. Connacht, Damas, the Heron Guard and a handful of veterans climbed the treacherous Norn Pass with the fire of vengeance burning in their hearts. The Emperor has fallen and the Lankerfin army has paid their respects. There is mourning among the troops and all are ready to chase after Mogim and achieve their vengeance. Connacht had learned to respect the Emperor despite his disagreements with him. Perhaps Connacht wouldn't have become the hero we know of without the influence of the Emperor. Strangely, Leotrim's death was not told about within the Tain. I wonder why not. Connacht chooses just to take the healthy and experienced soldiers with him to face Mulligan. Logically, this would be so that he can quickly catch up with the 24-7 march of the undead. Taking the wounded would severely slow him down. Their only chance is to catch up with him quickly before he passes through the cloud spine, and they will hit him hard. These soldiers will be facing Mulligan and his undead horde with the burning fire of vengeance within them. Mulligan better watch out. We have talked about Mulligan plenty before, so I won't repeat myself, but I will explain to you his skills in combat. Moagim wields a great sword which will make quick work of your units. Unfortunately though, his AI seems pretty limited and you probably won't actually have to worry about his melee skills unless you foolishly charge him in close combat. Ironically, you can shoot him with arrows and throw grenades at him and he won't really respond. Moagim does have a vortex dream spell that is deadly and will obliterate your units quickly. Much like the Watcher's Whisper Dream spell, this spell is slow to form but will distort the ground and obliterate your units caught within it. The Vortex Dream, however, also shoots lightning out at your units that are close to it, so make sure you get away. This Dream spell, however, forms even slower than the Whisper Dream, so if you are paying attention, you won't have any trouble getting away from it. Mogim also has the ability to teleport himself around the battlefield. This seems a bit hard to predict though, and I haven't checked the scripting for the level. Unfortunately, Mumbo Jumbo didn't actually create an animation for the spell, so it is a bit underwhelming to just see him instantly disappear and appear elsewhere. Oh well. Now in the myth manual, Moagim is also referred to as the King of Nightmares and Moagim the Horned. In game, he is called a Dark Sorcerer. In a couple of journals in Myth 3, he is called the Faceless Terror. Most of these names are unique to Myth 3, but the Faceless Terror was actually a name that existed prior to Myth 3 The Wolf Age. 
You have probably heard about the faceless men if you read some of the delusions on myth.bungie.org. However, I can assure you that the faceless man is actually not referred to in any of the Bungie Myth games. It was taken from a gaming website prior to the release of Myth the Fallen Lords. While this description was certainly provided by Bungie, it is pretty far-fetched to consider game info that actually didn't make it into the game to be canon, but regardless, it is kind of cool to see Myth 3 cater to some of the fans and make Moagim the faceless terror. I would guess this is why they decided to put a mask over his face. Now let's jump into the mission so that we can put an end to this faceless terror. Track down Mo again and put an end to the fiend. That's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna track him down and put an end to him. Yes, sir. So let's get our presets. We get some enemies coming at us right away. Some forgotten and some thrall. Nothing we can't handle. Over here. Yes, sir. It's gonna be some forgotten coming from behind us, and then some thrall up here. Yeah. You can just send all our melee at them. Yes. Oh, I might have sent my guys a little bit too far forward. I sent him too far forward, oh well. Trying to get cute. We'll make short work of him. We got like, like pretty much all our hero units are heroes. We got Dwarven heroes, Archer heroes, Hero on Guard heroes, Zerk heroes. So, we got quite the force. We're gonna get attacked from by some fo forgotten from behind. Hey, you know what? I think we gotta um. There's all these fallen or forgotten doing whatever the heck they're doing, like praying or something. I don't know. We alert them, and then and then we'll get attacked from behind when they leave. There they come. Yes, sir. Make up your over here. Yes. Yeah. Can't remember. Did we get attacked by? Yeah, I thought. I thought maybe we got attacked by a thrall from the front. I couldn't remember. Nothing to worry about though. And we got a little breaking point. Now we got to deal with um, a few soulless who will not be a problem at all. But they're up on this little hill over here which is makes them a little bit of a pain. We're gonna draw them off. Come off their little perch. They come down here and then we can completely destroy them. With our doors. There's a lot of Solus. Oh, come on, hit, get him. Okay, those guys are dealt with. Um, now we can come up here. Okay, there's a couple groups of Forgotten that will patrol past this spot up here. So we're just gonna deal with these guys, these two groups of patrols, so we don't gotta worry about them. one group down. Just 
fast forward till the other one comes around and we'll deal with these guys too. These guys are so much easier to deal with with Dwarven heroes. And let our melee finish them up. Okay, now that we got that deal dealt with, um, let's see. Okay, we gotta come up here. See, we're trying to get to the right over here. This is the path we gotta go to. But, um, there's some thrall up here we gotta deal with. Now, you'll see them and you'll tend to wanna, you'll see them up here and you'll tend to wanna stay back. But the thing is, once we damage the thrall, some whites will come out of this pool right here. So we don't want to stay here. We want to push up onto them. Over here. Right? And so our bowmen will shoot them and they'll get activated. And then we'll see these whites come out right here. And we'll just set our archers on them. And now we can back up a little bit to kill the ones that come out of the water. And that's pretty much it for these guys. Okay, now we got some Solus perched up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Huron Guard to distract him. So I'm choosing a Huron Guard because he has heal. So if I totally screw up with my micro, he can still, um, you know, I can just heal him. So... Honestly, he could probably just eat him. I'm gonna set him on a little patrol. These archer heroes can shoot pretty dang far. Which are pretty, which is pretty nice. Okay, so now we got a few guys in the water here that are, we have a couple whites in here and some thrall in here, but they don't come out until you get your units up here. So what you can kind of do is you can kind of stay back and then just send like, I'm going to grab one unit and just send them up here. And then they'll come out. And then you can make quick work of these units. So really, when you're passing this ice, you know, with these pits of water, whatever you want to call them, these little pools, you just gotta worry about the whites. There's some other whites, I think, in maybe it's one of these pools up on the other side. Um, but it's not the direct route, and there's really no reason to go that way if you know the map, so you don't gotta worry about them. I think those ones come out only if you go near them. Okay. Let's go. All right. So we got a couple groups of forgotten up here. Here's one of them. Okay, they seem to go after my archers and doors, so I'm just gonna pull back and let my melee units take care of them. And I guess we got some thrall now. Might as well just take this guy out with our archers. And our doors can start destroying these thrall. We got the high ground. Over 
He's got these these draw basically stand no chance. I think a few Thrall decided to come up the other way for some reason. I think there might be a few more Forgotten that come up here. I can't remember if there's another group of Forgotten up here or not. I draw these solar spurts over here, which surprisingly already came out after me. And then he got this kind of like nice, really nice spot to defend. I think uh, here comes some thrall, yep. Yeah. Thrall are no chance. Have even like becoming an issue. Okay. Now we're gonna keep on this high ground because there's some f groups of forgotten we gotta face. So if you come up here, these are. So we're actually, let me stop like right here. So you see up here, we got Mogim's camp. You know, here's his little tent. It's kind of open area, and there's this bridge over here. Over, it's just like a black abyss or something. So if you bring him out here, you'll actually see Mo again. I'm moving. He's right there. <laughs> he shoots his spell right in the middle. But you gotta run away because you got forgotten chasing after you. No. Well, I did not mean for my doors to attack, obviously. <laughs> when did I last save it? Oh, I did save it right before him. Okay. See, I'd like to come just to right about here and then just start running. Now it's easier for me to do that since I'm not trying to show you Mo again and everything. Now that we got those guys dealt with, there's a bigger group of Forgotten coming. Yeah, no big challenge here. Our Berserk Heroes. And here on guard heroes just mow them down. And then we just got these thrall. We can just pass forward a little bit. They're no problem at all. And we got them dealt with. We're gonna just run up to the bridge. Without a worry in the world, and we're just gonna park right on this bridge. And there's another group of thrall coming. Stand clear. Okay. All right. Now we're ready to go face Mo again. Now, 
I'll show you, I'm gonna show you the hard way to kill him first. And this would probably be the normal way you fight him. So you kinda have to be careful because he's gonna shoot his little spell at you. Don't worry about these thrall. These thrall are come out infinitely. They keep coming out of these two different pools. So the main thing we gotta worry about is just seeing Mulligan's spell as he comes as we're pressing up again up towards Mulligan. I don't know where his spell is. Is it back here somewhere? I don't know. I don't see it. I don't even know where he shot it. Oh, it's like way up there. Okay. So he's kind of up here, beyond this wall, kind of pool of water up here where these thrall just came out of. Yeah, there he is. He's right there right now. There's a couple spots that he tends to like to teleport between. So I'm kind of moving my, um... I'm gonna stay far away from this. So you want to wait till this is completely gone before you come even remotely t close to it. See, like, it will still damage you even then, like, if you go near it. So you need to stay far away. You see Mo again? Resist the urge to rush him with your melee. It will end poorly. You can't, you can't kill these guys with your... With your melee. And we're gonna ignore the thrall and run away. Hurry up, guys. Kinda got caught. Because of our poor AI on movement, they kinda were taking damage. But we're fine. We'll come over here. We'll just let the thrall come to us, so we can start shooting him. Oh, and he—they <laughs> were like aiming this way, but the arrows came out this way because he like teleported right where they were shooting, which is actually hilarious. So you can see, like, Mogim doesn't really react. So you can just kind of pelt him with arrows this way. Now this is, and then you just got to keep dealing with these thrall. So this is the hard way to kill him, and as you can tell, it's not that hard. But before I finish him off, I'm going to show you the easy way to kill him right here. This is so much easier, there's really no point of doing what I just did. So let's just take um, Damas. Come here, Damas. You're going to go kill Mulligan. I know it should be Connacht, but Connacht um, it's just weaker than you. Oh, there he is. Come here. What do you guys think? Do you think Damas can take him? Oh, well, he teleported. You, you got this, Damas. You can do it. Oh, wait, I healed him. And he did. He's dead. It's kind of ironic that Damas can kill with the herb. You know, Mulligan with a herb, and in Myth 2, you know, you can just kill Soulblighter with a herb. Mulligan, <laughs> the faceless terror, was put down by the might and skill of Connacht, the wolf. 
The windscreen shows Connacht holding his battle axe up in the air victoriously over Moagim's dead body. The windscreen tells us that Moagim was put down by the might and skill of Connacht the wolf. Ironically, in this mission, it is actually very unwise to send Connacht against Moagim, as Moagim will completely own him. We will just let him have his pride, I guess. The Voss screen shows Connacht lying on the ground, dying with Moagim's greatsword plunged through his chest. You can see the shadow of Moagim standing over him. The Law screen tells us that with his corrupt blade, Moagim ended the life of the great hero. Does the game call the blade corrupt because of the user or because it has some magical property? Now, before we end the video, let me show you how you can completely break the coding in this mission. I think you will find it quite entertaining. Well, you remember at the end of the mission where after you cross the bridge, you got the thrall coming out of the water. So, you know, what I did was I've been killing a lot of thrall. So if you kind of position your units like this and you just kind of pass forward, you know, the thrall will just keep coming and you guys will just automatically blow them up. Now there is this glitch where if you get too many models on the screen that your units and stuff will start going invisible, like you can't draw or everything. Like you'll see some of this models and stuff, the dead bodies, appearing and disappearing. So there's got to be a limit. Now, the thing you don't... <laughs> the funny thing is, is I was just leaving this going, letting them get kills. But let me show you, um, I'm going to skip ahead a bit to another save from later and the game completely broke and I'll show you. Alright, here we are after pass forwarding for a bit. So here you go, we got this dwarf, right? Watch what happens if I try to throw a grenade. <laughs> the heck, like the grenade won't show up, so I can't kill him. What happens if I, he axes me? He's all confused. Look at over here, look at this dwarf. They're trying to fight this dwarf. Look at it, they can't hurt him. <laughs> He's invincible. <laughs> and check us out over here. Oh, there's a, here, let's grab my, um, here's my melee. Like the, the, he shoots his bow and there's no arrow. And look, I can't even use my, my herbs to kill him, like, it won't show up. <laughs> oh. You can go fight Mo again and he like, he, he can't even hurt you. And where is he? Let's go find Mulligan. Here he is. He just disappears in nothing. Get him! Get him, guys! Nobody's taking any damage. It's so wonky. Anyways, that's the... That's the great Mulligan. And that's how you can completely break this level. Hope you liked it. Well, that is it for this mission. Now that we have defeated Mulgam, what could the next mission possibly bring? Find out next time in The Traitor. Lots of interesting things to talk about at the conclusion of this game, so you won't want to miss it. See you then.